Whether you are upgrading from another iPhone or maybe jumping from Android to Apple, there are many choices when it comes to new iPhone. It's another iPhone season and with the iPhone 15 being released, you might be considering an upgrade. The 15 Pro Max promises to be amazing, right? And so does the regular 15 and 15 Plus. And like every year, I'm gonna try and potentially save you here from Apple marketing and from yourself. This is usually one of the most popular videos on the channel and this is now the fourth yearly buying guide. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. One option may be to skip the iPhone 15 altogether. That was not meant to happen. Got a problem here. Okay. Still show the. One option may be to skip the iPhone 15 altogether, not waste your money, and sit tight and get the 16 next year. A brand new iPhone is so expensive now, and I know this can be quite an anxious time for you as well. It's exciting, but at the same time, there are a lot of options. Apple marketing will 100% try to convince you that the shiny new iPhone 15 is better than whatever you have. And in some cases, that's gonna be true, but in other cases, you could be saving quite a bit of money. On one hand, you have a device which is supposed to have a huge camera upgrade, one of the biggest changes in the iPhone history, which is the USB-C port. But on the other hand, it's the usual stuff, right? It looks and feels exactly like it did for the last three to four years with some minor design change. And as expected, there's gonna be that good old trick of having some exclusive features on the iPhone Pro models, which one could argue could also be on the standard models. I've had an iPhone 15 Pro Max here with me for a few weeks, which is the dummy device that's meant to be an exact replica of the real thing. And you can see, right, that the changes will be very minimal from a design perspective but potentially quite big on the camera aspect. So with all that in mind, let's go through some options and what I think is the most sensible thing to do, depending on where you are. And not just budget-wise, but based on your current device as well. And a reminder, I can't really tell you what you should or shouldn't do. No YouTuber can, in my opinion. As we go through the options here, please use this as a guidance, but apply your own situation, your own choices, your own circumstances. I'm only here to help you navigate through the marketing noise and all these options. Let's start with the easiest scenario, which I think is where you have an iPhone already, but it's about three years old or more. So we're talking iPhone 12 and older. If you have an iPhone 13 or 14, bear with me, I've got some options for you as well. But in this case where you have an older iPhone, whether you like it or not, the features have moved on considerably since 2020. We have much better cameras, we have impressive displays as well on most models, and an awesome battery life. But should you go straight for the iPhone 15? Sure, if that makes sense financially and it makes you happy, why wouldn't you, right? Yes, your personal happiness is an important factor. I do appreciate that buying premium tech goes beyond the features of the device itself sometimes. There's an aspect of having the latest and greatest that might be important to you. And if you can afford it, why not, right? You worked for it. Depending on your current plan, you might be up for an upgrade anyway with your provider, or even better, you took my advice last year and you saved some cash. In which case, yes, the latest iPhone 15 will give you that peace of mind that you won't need to upgrade anytime soon. Which brings me to the iPhone 14 option. Personally, I've had all sorts of problems with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, just being honest here. For full transparency, I got rid of mine and you know I've been happily using the S23 Ultra and the Fold 5 here. But most of my issues were iOS 16 related. After four or five months, I just had enough of it, to be honest. I think the improvements on iOS 17 will make the iPhone 14 a really decent option now. Let's not forget that even the iPhone 14 Plus could be a decent upgrade as well, because in my reviews of that device, you know, it was one of those very unusual phones, but it was a really nice phone to use. If you want that bigger display without all the weight that comes with the 14 Pro Max, and of course you don't mind the fact that it's the older notch and not the monkey island, the 14 Plus with a reduced price would be a really good buy, I think. Now, what happens if you're limited on budget? I think if you're really limited on budget, and hey, I'm sure you're not gonna hear this from a lot of people on YouTube, but I think the 13 Pro range is probably the sweet spot for Pro phones. You're getting a fantastic camera, awesome display, without the crappy monkey island, I actually regret selling mine. I had the, the, the light blue one, sapphire blue, whatever it was, right? The 13 Pro now will be even cheaper. And if you can get a decent 13 Pro, that's a hidden gem, I think, that not many people will be recommending because of the, you know, shiny object syndrome. I did loads of comparisons between the 13 and the 14 here on the channel, and you can check those afterwards. But if you really settled on Apple, the iPhone 13 Pro range, or indeed the 14, both are still beasts, regardless of what Apple is gonna try to tell you, and will remain great devices for a few more years still. This is definitely something to consider because Apple will, you know, 100% try to convince you otherwise. Now, this is a trickier one. What if you know that you're gonna upgrade, but you're not sure whether to get the 15, the regular 15, the 15 Plus, or the 15 Pro? or indeed the big boy Pro Max. Let me get back to you on that. Whichever model you choose, you're likely gonna need a decent protective case, 
Which brings me to Casetify, who's making this video possible today. And Casetify have incredible case designs and are always a great protective choice for me. If you know the channel, you know that I'm quite picky with the brands I work with, especially when it comes to cases. And I really appreciate Casetify because they spend a lot of time with me, sharing a lot of what goes behind the scenes as well. And I was super impressed to learn how they go about producing these cases. They have a really nice ethos of being sustainable. And I really like how they managed to get a really cool balance between you know, being protective and stylish at the same time. They don't stop bringing innovations either, right? They're constantly bringing new ideas to the cases. We have the trusty impact cases here, which offer great drop protection. You can absolutely bet that we'll be testing that too. Like I've done for the last three years, I've thrown cases out of a moving car. I've thrown it from everywhere. I've dropped cases on asphalt, concrete, and I will be doing something a little bit crazy this year as well. And if you're a bit clumsy like me, or perhaps you work in tougher environments, then there's the bounce case, which I loved reviewing last year. And I think that's gonna be a better choice for you and offers an insane 21.3 feet protection. To give you an idea, that's like stacking up two giraffes on top of each other. They're always adding new designs. I'm never bored of looking at them. I've been reviewing them for the last three years and they always have something in there that I like. They always bring some really cool options as well, not just for the iPhone, but for Android devices too. KST5 have been doing a lot of work to develop their own technology for protection, but at the same time, keeping functionality in mind. For example, you can choose to have a MagSafe option as well. Their website is super easy to use. And here's where Castify really shines for me. You know, it's so much fun to come here and customize your case. And if you don't want to customize it, you can pick from the hundreds of designs too. Grab yours today from castify.com forward slash Alex G to get a 15% off. And thanks so much Castify for making this video possible. To recap, so far we looked at the scenario where you have an older iPhone, which is three years old or more. Your options, depending on your budget are, Get the latest and greatest if your budget allows and if it makes you happy, that's the easiest recommendation, right? Option two, get an upgrade, but an upgrade doesn't always mean you have to get the latest. Definitely consider the iPhone 14 range or indeed even the iPhone 13 Pro models. Before we get into the next scenario, here's something else that I don't think you're gonna hear a lot of YouTubers say. Sure, there are plenty of improvements on the iPhone 15, but the design itself is not gonna be one of those improvements. I even get confused to know which one is which. If you look at these, the iPhone 15 design really hasn't changed that much at all. Unless, of course, you're coming from an iPhone 7 or 8 or even older, right? This design, even though it's not new anymore, is gonna be quite a jump for you, really, right? I do appreciate that, you know? Going from those older iPhones to the 15 will be an amazing experience for you, and I'm actually jealous of you. Now, the second scenario that you might find yourself is that you already have the iPhone 13 or 14 model, so they're newer iPhones, right? What should you do in that case? For me, there are two recommendations really. If you're someone who relies a lot on the quality of the camera, so your images and videos have to be pristine, and I'm not just saying your personal Instagram and TikToks, but you might have a business or you're trying to build a personal brand, or you could be using your iPhone as a photographer where I know every minor improvement is gonna matter to you, then absolutely, you know, go for the upgrade. The 15 Pro Max will give you that edge. And if you're doing this for client work, you're probably gonna get that money back very quickly, right? In this case, a way of looking at this is, it's an investment in your business. I will be ordering the 15 Pro Max again, most likely, and I might actually get the Plus Model 2 to compare them like I did last year, which reminds me, YouTube can be quite tricky for channels like this one. So if you enjoyed this video so far, a thumbs up really goes a long way. Honestly, you know, it helps me to get YouTube to recommend this channel to other people. And have a look at the channel later. If you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. The benefit to you is that I'll be here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. Lots more on iPhone content, of course, but I do enjoy my other tech gadgets as well. So you get a nice balance here of Android, Apple, and other stuff as well. Now here's a third scenario. You already have the iPhone 14, and really, apart from the ability to show off a new shiny toy, there's absolutely no real reason to upgrade to the iPhone 15, unless you're coming from a regular 14 and you wanna to go to the Pro models. The same recommendation applies really. Only upgrade if those extra features in the camera specifically, right, make a big difference for you. Remember, the display is gonna be very similar, it's gonna look and feel very similar. So it's not like people look at your phone and go, oh, look at that, that's the new one, right? It's the latest iPhone, whoa. It's gonna be very subtle. I'd say you could save a few hundred dollars and upgrade next year, or if the improvements that you're looking for are met by the 14 Pro or Pro Max, then again, save some money and go for that instead. Don't forget, come September 2024, the iPhone 16 will be out anyway. It sounds cliche, but yeah, if you don't need to upgrade, don't. Now, let me level with you. I like to be transparent and keep it real here when it comes to tech brands, by the way. So a bit of context here so you know where I'm coming from. You're probably tired of me saying this, but I've used every iPhone since the first one. But if you know this channel, you know that I've also used a fair share of Android devices, especially in the last two years. In 2020, I actually changed completely to the S21 Ultra at the time and went back to using iPhones in 2021 and 2022. And this year, I've completely switched to my S23 Ultra here and having the Fold 5 as my other phone. This context is just so you know that even though I'm 
recommending an iPhone or another, I like to keep things in perspective and as impartial as possible. You might say, okay, Alex, that sounds great. You know, I've got a few options here. But what if I have an Android phone and I'm trying to make a jump to Apple? Well, you mean luck because that's my very next video. If you're watching this in the future, that video is already out and you can find it here. Now, if you want to know more about the key pain points in switching phones, you can also check these videos over here. I've been through some pain, trust me. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe for more iPhone 15 content, Apple Watch Ultra as well, all coming thick and fast now. I'll see you soon.